Welcome back. Today we will be going over four point three, the logarithmic function. Okay. Um. The necessity of this comes from a problem we have from last time. So let's say Lacrosse population. And we know the model follows the continuous growth rate, which is P, E, R, T, principle, growth rate, everything. Now we say if we know the growth rate, we know the principle, we can find how much population you have in a certain year. Just need to calculate how many years does it take for you to grow or decay to that population, which is fine. But the difficulty is in real life, this rate is usually not known. Instead, what we know is at 2008, maybe we have a certain population. And at 2020, we have another population, which means within 12 years, which means we know T, the whole thing grow from to this. So if you're plugging everything into the problem, okay, we find that the unknown is here. So this, to find this growth rate R, it involves an operation, which is called logarithmic. Now if we try to simplify this thing a little bit, basically what we're trying to say is, if we know this is 8 and this is 2, we are wondering to which exponent if you take the base 2 to this exponent, you will get a number 8. And we know the answer is 3 by our experience, right? Now, think about what we know before. Before, we know 2, we know cube, we wonder what this number is. So we can say it's exactly the same operation, except you are finding different things. So let's write them down. Before you know this, no x, you plug in x, you get y. That's the, uh, that's the operation we had before. Now. It's the opposite. We know y, we want to find what x is. This is all called exponential. <laughs> and this, what we would later call a logarithmic function, with the same thing, we can see it's nothing but the inverse function of the exponential function. Because they follow the same rule, except one goes from x to y, and the other goes from y to x, okay? Later we will say this is basically defined to be the logarithmic function. All right. Exponential, you know x, you can find y. Logarithmic, you know y, you can find x. Back. Now, to do that, first, we need to review a little bit about what we mean by inverse function. Some examples. These two are inverse function to each other. Okay. Times something by two is the same is the inverse of dividing something by two. Okay, double and a half. Okay. Taking the square of something, the inverse function is going to be the square root of something. Okay, so it's like the inverse operation how to go from here to here and how to go from here to here. This has a restriction which we later we will briefly mention. Okay. Now Let's write down several things we need to know about inverse function. This is the review. You know all this before. Inverse function has more properties than what I listed here, but we only list the things necessary for us to define the logarithmic function. Number one, to make sure you have an inverse function, we call it invertible. So a function is invertible, which means you have an inverse function if it is one to one. which means 1x only goes to 1y. You cannot have 2x going to the same y. That just cannot happen. From here, you can see y equals x squared won't work unless you put this restriction. Okay. Of course, we also have a horizontal line test packed with this. If you have something like this, you do a horizontal line test, like x squared, you have two part. That means for the different x, you have the same y. This is not invertible. Okay. 
So this one is only invertible if it passes the horizontal line test, which means if you draw a horizontal line, the graph only intersects this one for at the most once. Second, y equals fx if and only if x equals f inverse y. This tells us two things. Number one, the inverse function is defined in this notation. f inverse x. This does not equal 1 over fx. This doesn't mean power. This means inverse. OK? Second, this tells you if x, y is on the graph, Hmm. on the graph of f, then if you switch the order of x and y, this one will be on the graph of f inverse. <laughs> Think about it. If 1, 2 is here, if you plug in 1, you got 2. Then if you plug in 2, you should get 1 on the inverse. So you switch the x and y which is very easy to, easy to understand. The inverse function, this is the original function, takes 1, go to 2. The inverse function takes the 2 and the backtrack to find 1. All right. The third thing, f composed with f inverse x equals f inverse composed with fx. equals x. What it says is you take x, your function bring it to y, and then your f inverse will bring this y back to x. So if you do f first, then you do f inverse back, it's equal to you didn't do anything. Okay. Similarly, if you start from y, you do f inverse first, then f is equal to you didn't do anything. Okay. For example, same thing here. Okay. If we let the first one to be fx, and we know the inverse function is the second one, then we have f circle f inverse x is going to be 2, plugging f inverse x, which is x. You divide it by half, divide it by 2, which means half the size, and then you double it, it's equal to not doing anything. That's why it's called the inverse. Okay. Finally, the graph. You can draw this by yourself. If 1, 2 is on f, then 2, 1 is on f inverse. That means if something is here, then the one corresponding one is here. If 1, 0 is on f, 0, 1 is on f inverse. So if 1 is here, the other one is here. You can try several more points by switching the position of x and y, but eventually you will realize these two graphs satisfies they are symmetric. With respect to, to this 45 degree line, so it's y equals x. To give you some example, let's draw something more dramatic. If you have something like this, the corresponding one will look like this. If this is f, this is f inverse. That gives us a convenient way to find the graph of f inverse, assuming we already know how to find the graph of f. I went over all the concepts really quick. You can pause the video and just try to review some of the concepts, but these will be all we need to know in order to get the logarithmic function from the exponential function because they are inverse function to each other. All right. With that in mind, now we are ready. Logarithmic function. What is it? 
it's the inverse of the log function, uh, the exponential function. Defined in this way, this part means it's a log. This part takes a base, which come from here. Okay. Now we just need to write it down. If and only if. x equals a to the y. Okay, so That basically means this one takes x and try to find y, which is exactly the opposite for exponents, which means you know the exponent and try to find this number. Okay, That's our definition of f inverse of exponential. All right. Let's try some examples. We can see this is okay, and this basically means x equals two to the y. They are the same thing. All right. Remember, this comes from the exponential function. When you switch x and y, you have this one. So, what is log base two? Eight. That's the same as saying we know x is 8, we know this is 2. What is this number? Now from our idea, we know it's 3 because 2 to the cube is 8, but we're doing the opposite. What is log base two, uh, 3? 27. That's the same as saying, compare the format, this is 27, this is 3. What's exponent? Now we know it's 3. Therefore, it is 3. What is log base 4? 1 over 16. That means you have a 4 to some power doesn't give you 1 over 16. Well, we do know the answer is 2 if you're looking for 16. But if you're looking for 1 over 16, it should be negative 2. So that's it. We get all the log function values from the exponential. Okay. The first time you are doing this, if this is the first time you are doing it, try to write down the definitions. Make sure you know where to put x, where to put, where to put y, and then start to play with it. Okay. Once you get familiar with it, usually this is what I do. I don't have to write the whole thing down. I just say things in this order. Two to z, which power equals 8. So if you start from 2 as your base, you are finding the missing number in order to get 8. This is how I got 3. So I don't have to write this down anymore. It becomes natural for me to read things in this way. You don't have to do this, okay? but this is what I personally recommend. This is how I remembered how to do the numbers. All right. That's great. We know how to evaluate um, log function now. Basically, it comes from doing exponentials. Okay. Can we make things even better? Because this is still kind of like counterintuitive. I need to, you know, rethink log in terms of exponential. I just want to think about log in terms of log. Well, there is a shortcut. It comes from the property of the inverse function. Remember, if you have x, if you do f inverse, and if you do f again, it's equal to doing nothing. And you can switch the order. Doesn't matter which one you do first. And we know f is going to be log, and f inverse is going to be exponential. Then they should cancel each other when you do things, which means we have the following two fact. If you take a number, okay, you do the exponential, then you do the log with the same base, it's equal to doing nothing. Second, if you have something and you take the log, then you take the exponential, it's equal to doing nothing. Because they're inverse functions to each other, they cancel each other. 
So there is another convenient way to compute this. What is it? Well, we don't know. But if you apply the power on both sides, we do have and these two cancel each other, which give you just 8. So by doing the operations, we can actually get the same thing we want, but we don't have to think about anything. We just follow a simple rule in algebra. This will, this will become super handy when you try to solve equations involving log later. But for now, to just let you have a taste, this operation is definitely doable. All right. Now number three. Number four, actually. We want to talk about the graphs of log. Okay, And when we talk about a function, we have a lot of things. Domain, range, some special points, horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, whatever we have, right? But the beautiful thing is, the beautiful thing is, this comes from exponential. Remember? All we need to do is just take the exponential and flip it with, re with respect to y equals x. We got everything. Therefore, let's write on the table and compare these two side by side. Inverse function to each other. Let's talk about the domain and the range. The domain of a to the x is this from our old notes. Then the inverse function, remember, this refers to x, this refers to y. For log, it's exactly the same thing, except you switch x and y. So this goes to that, and this goes to that. Very good. Second, point. We know this one always passes 0, 1. That means plugging 0, a to the 0 is always 1. Doesn't matter which a you have. By inverse function, we know this is 1, 0. Okay. That's a fact. That is, log a of 1 is 0, regardless of a. It comes from this. All right. Next, asymptote. This one has a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. Then this one should have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 0. Think about it, and if it's hard, don't worry. Let's see the graph. Remember, for graph, we have two cases for exponential. Why is this? Okay. The other one is this. Now, of course, for logarithmics, we also have two cases. I prefer to draw them together to let you see what's going on. So let's draw the a bigger than 1 case. This is exponential. And remember, for inverse function, we flip it. 0, 1 goes to 1, 0. And the whole thing goes here. Now go back to your asymptote thing again. Look at the black curve. You can see the horizontal asymptote is here, which is y equal to 0. Now once you flip this one with respect to the blue line, that should correspond to the vertical asymptote here, which is the red line. That's how you flip it. That's why the horizontal asymptote become the vertical asymptote. The y equal to 0 become x equal to 0. Now with the same idea, you can try the other case. For this one, the exponential looks like this. Ooh. Now all you need to do is just flip this one. Be careful, this goes to that. This part good. This part good. This part good. So y equals log base a x if a is less than 1. For example, log base 1 half. Okay, a. 
it gives you something like this. All right. That's everything we need to know about logarithmic functions in terms of function properties. Domain range, which is the same as the range domain of exponential. A point zero one goes to one zero once you flip it. And asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote become the vertical asymptote once you flip it with respect to the blue line. Finally, the graph looks like this way. Okay. Now, if you remember the exercise we did before, we did compare these two. We say one is steeper than the other. Do you remember which is which? The bigger base is steeper. Okay. Based on that, we try to talk about we say basically they're the same, except you need to flip it. In case you haven't done so, try to try it. And it's very easy to see that they should satisfy this relationship. These are something we had before for exercise. Now I'm going to give you another exercise. Can you draw these two on the same graph? Log base 2x and log base 3x. The other one, log base 1 half x. based on the graph from here and here. Or you can just do it from scratch based on what you know about log. Either way, it will be fine, but I will strongly suggest you to do it. And try to see, do you have something like that? Do you have something like that? Do you have something like that? And which is which? You need to clearly indicate which is which, okay? How different these two, these two functions are. Which one's steeper, which one's flatter, in which kind of sense? But I will leave it to you as an exercise. Okay. Now, finally, just some side topics. The first one is some terminology. We have some special log functions. The first one is log base e. The reason is because we are going to use it every time we use continuous growth model, we need e to the x. Of course, we see log base e a lot of times. Therefore, this one deserves a name. We call it the natural log. And then for simplicity, we just write it to be ln x. This ln here indicates its log base e. And it's easier to write down. So n here speaks for natural. So that's the first one. A second thing we usually use is log base 10. We call this the common log. And then the notation is simply log x. We omit this 10. So next time you see something like this, it basically means it's log base 10. Okay. The reason we take this one out to be special is because we use it a lot. Simply because we use the multiples of 10 a lot. For example, 10,000, this easily is log base 10, 10 to the fourth, which give you four. So this one actually helps for you to count the arrow, uh, the zeros, okay? For example, log 10, a million, is going to give you six zeros. Log base 10, a billion, is going to give you nine zeros. And a trillion, a gazillion, a quadrillion. Okay, you can go ahead and try to find the numbers. But basically, this log is helping you to count how many zeros you have. So you can compare people at, compare numbers at uh, different levels. Okay? Sadly, for web work, when you see log base x, sometimes times it means ln, and sometimes it means log base 10. So use your best judgment when you do web work. But this thing only stays with web work. 
it's not common for people to actually write this thing down and refer it to ln because you can write down ln. All right. Based on this, we can somehow give you two interesting ideas about how to, um, how to use a log in real life. The first one is actually data transformation. So let's write it down, applications. The idea is quite simple. Okay. You know when people doing astronomy, okay, they were trying to write a really big graph. Maybe this is the universe. They want to put a map here to tell you Earth is here, uh, Moon is here, and maybe the Sun is here, and so on. That is great, but the problem here is, think about it. You don't just want to put them in a rough position to tell who is near and who is far. You also want the distance here to reflect the scale of the actual distance between the Earth, Moon, and Earth, Sun. For example, if this one is three times as long as what you have here, you better draw it as three times as long on your, on your map. And then you have trouble. Why? Because the Earth from the Sun uh, to the Moon is roughly this much. Roughly 0.38 million okay, kilometer. But the Earth to the Sun is very far compared to this one, which is 1.49.6. million. So if you compare these two, the distance of the second one is almost, I don't know, four times, 400 times bigger, longer. That means if you draw the Earth here, you draw the Moon here, Okay. no matter how you draw the Sun, you, if you want to draw it in real scale, this one has to be 400, 400 times longer. And no matter how small you draw this, right? Remember, there's a price if you draw it small. If you draw it really small, like this, it's going to be minimized for you to tell the how, diff how big the differences are. So you want them to separate a little bit, so at least you can see it's two planets. Okay? Then, in order to draw this line to be 400 times as long as this, your sun has to be... And I'm pretty sure this is only like 50 times longer. It's not 400. So you need a very big paper to just draw the moon, the earth, and the sun. Actually, let's just draw it and keep going. And the sun is somewhere there outside the paper. Not to mention if you want to draw more. For example, like the centaur, alpha which is like four light years from here, which is way bigger, maybe a million, a billion times longer than what you have from the Earth to the Moon. There's no way you can put them on the same scale if you want to draw a nice map like this. Sounds good? All right, so if this is hard, because astronaut distance is very dramatic, dramatically big, to put them on the map, what you can do is you can take the log of all the distance. Remember, exponential take a very small number because it grows really fast. Remember when we fold the paper, this one will give you the diameter of the universe if you only do one or three. That means it takes a small number, make it big. Then the inverse will take a very big number and make it small. So let's take the log. You said Earth to the moon. All right. That's 384400. Uh, zero, zero. But now let's use log scale. Instead of putting this one, we put log, pick a base. I will put pick log 10. And this gives you nothing but, um, let's see, log base 10.
Okay, that's his Warframe. Google doesn't take this. Log base 10. Which is roughly 5 point. This is the log scale. The Earth to the Sun. One, four, nine. Million. Which is roughly Eight point one seven five. If you use log scale, can you see the difference between these two numbers? This one is not even as big as doubling the five one eight five. So of course I can put them together if I use log scale. Moreover, let's think about the universe again. Okay, the diameter of the universe. After we take the log, it's going to be 93 billion light years, which is log 93 billion okay, times light year, which is how far, how much a light travels in a year. Well, this is the speed of a light for a second. This is how much it does in one minute. This is how much it does in one hour. This is how much it does in one day. And this is how much it does in one year. How big is this number? Very interesting. But now, let's take the log of it. Sixty, twenty-four, three sixty-five. It's roughly twenty-six point nine, so twenty-seven, ninety-four. Okay, which is almost triple the size of this. So if I want to draw roughly what we have here, we can draw the universe. And we can make sure this is roughly like 27 in log scale. Okay. Now, what we have here from Earth to the Sun is roughly one fifth out of this. So if that's the case, this is from the Earth to the Sun. Well, let's be cocky. Let's make Earth the center of the universe. Which we should be doing. Now, one fifth of that, the moon is roughly here. The sun is roughly from six to uh, five point eight five to eight, so it's roughly doubling, maybe one point five longer. As long as the sun is roughly here, and because this is the diameter of the universe, you can draw the Alpha Centaur somewhere. You can draw all the stars actually in one little map. You don't need a too big paper. If you use log scale, okay, that's the power. Okay, that's the power of using log data transformations. Everything exponential becomes like linear. Okay. Of course, doubling the distance here doesn't mean that you have twice as big as distance. It actually means you have a hundred times, which is ten to the square. That's what we, we mean by doubling. Okay, you times another ten. So even though you have something like that, this distance is actually ten times longer than what you have here. That's what we really mean by log scale. But by the graphs, it looks pretty nice. All right. That's number one. Number two, it's pretty difficult for me to say it. So I will just let you Google it. It's called Benford's Law. A law used widely in finance. And 
it's a rule of thumb, but okay, it's not careful, but it's roughly in finance and in the nature. About populations, no surprising. About、uh, your emails, about the words, frequency, and things like that. Okay, I would suggest Google it and read it. I guarantee you, it's pretty fun. All right, that's the basic of log functions.